Hmm. I think that's just a regular one. And uh, no, I don't see one. I could be wrong. But uh, just because I don't see one, I'm going to make one really quick. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, videos on YouTube already for how to bypass a lot of Suron packs, the stock ones, and uh, even some of the aftermarket uh, packs uh, like the EBMX pack. However, I don't see one for a repair or bypass on the EBMX packs that are potted, okay? It seems like the ones that are on YouTube, uh, they aren't potted inside, at least from what I can see. Uh, and the ones that I pulled up real quick, uh, and obviously some of those EBMX uh, batteries are potted. If you don't know what potted means, potted is like a clay gray plasticky compound they use that uh, a lot of companies put inside electronic components uh, be it controllers or any type of uh, component where they don't want uh, anyone tampering with that particular component or to uh, basically try to conceal some of their trade secrets on how they built stuff. So uh, even like my BAC-8000 or a lot of those controllers, if you attempt to open them up or do any modifications to them when you open them, they'll be potted, meaning they have that gray clay substance in there, all jammed and locked up. So if you do want to do anything you have to remove all of that stuff basically chip and chisel that stuff out of there break it up in order to actually get at the components and nobody really wants to do that it's a job so therefore that deters people from you know going in those type components okay so same time uh some companies like ebmx have been uh, potting batteries now this is an EBMX battery that was sent to me because right now it has the beep of death meaning the BMS is beeping because it is blown on the output discharge side so this battery has no voltage at the connector it will not run the bike so you know in order to repair this pack it's a pain in the ass because as I told you it's potted so I just want to make a quick video on how you would go about either replacing the BMS or bypassing now there's two reasons you're going to want to bypass a pack obviously one is to uh, get the full discharge uh, rate of whatever the cells uh, you know the the discharge rate of the pack can provide via the cells. You know, some packs can output more than the BMS that is in the pack is limiting it to. So therefore, you might want to bypass so you can get, you know, the full output of those cells. All right. At the same time, there's other reasons for wanting to bypass in a situation like this where you have a blown BMS, okay, and a potted battery, and the BMS is too damn hard to get to, so therefore you might just want to bypass the discharge side so you can be back up and running. This guy can't use this pack because the output side of the BMS is blown, and, uh, you know, he's not getting any voltage. So, I want to show you real quick how this pack came. Uh, damn, my camera slipped. 
but uh, as you can see you see that right there that's very dangerous that exposed hot wire but uh, being as though the BMS is blown uh, there's no current voltage there anyway but that could be very bad uh, if this battery was working that could definitely short out and cause a fire but I'm going to show you this battery uh, was sent to someone else to repair uh, after they saw that it was potted they didn't want to deal with it then uh, I don't blame them uh, if you don't know any shortcuts or secrets it's gonna be a pain in the ass now therefore the top was off okay so I've already when I when I took this top off because it didn't have the screws I cut I cut the power leads as you can see because I didn't want that to short out while I was moving it around uh, on that metal no kind of way so I just cut the leads however uh, now as I told you this person had started to work on this pack so this was open like that watch out Smokey as you can see the inside of this pack is potted has that gray compound in there so even over here let me grab uh, a light real quick okay. Alright. Hopefully it's charged up. Alright, even over here where the BMS is, that's the BMS right there. Uh they call these batteries, you know, the guy little guys out in the field call them the piggyback packs because uh they have that little extended piece off the side of the pack. That's actually where the BMS is housed at in this pack. So there aren't any cells in that uh part right there that you know it has a bms like this an antenna bms in there and uh we had two options to replace this bms uh which we could do and you see they started digging out the uh gray potting right there and uh they was like the hell with that there's too much work now if you want to replace that bms you're going to have to remove all of that gray potting. No doubt about it. There's no other way around it. However, if you just want to get back up and running, you could just do a quick bypass. And that would be very easy on this pack. Uh, a lot of guys do the bypass at the BMS. When you have the uh, positive B plus terminals of the battery which are at the top of this pack it's easier to do a bypass straight at the uh at the uh main negative and main positive terminal now as you all know bms's the current uh the the negative ground side is the only side that runs through the bms so the positive hot wire runs straight directly to the battery so whether you have a bad BMS or not, the positive side is always going to have voltage, okay? Now, if you attempt to measure the voltage at the connector, you won't get any voltage because the ground, which is this side over here, you can't see it, it's in that protective uh, sleeve, the ground is interrupted through the BMS. So, you would, you were to put your voltmeter on the positive and the ground you're not going to see any voltage all right but if you were to stick your positive lead on a positive wire and up here underneath of this uh white silicone is the ground terminal right there they got it covered up but that is the main ground if I put, let me turn the light on right there. If I put my ground there and my hot wire, my positive lead there, as you can see, uh, it's reading 68 volts. 68 volts. So this pack could easily be bypassed by just putting a ground, just connecting a ground wire straight to this ground terminal and uh, you can leave the positive 
you can leave the positive running through there to that QS8 and just run a new ground wire from this main ground out to your QS8 and your discharge side is bypassed. You'll have your voltage back and you'll be able to use this pack. So uh, this guy, he decided that uh, he just wanted to go ahead and bypass it. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to uh, put a ground lead right here on the main ground and uh, run that back to the QS8. And uh, bingo, this battery is back working again. But yeah, you know, when they're potted like that, you know, if you don't know what these uh, bus bars are, and that is the main bus bar for the ground right there, and the uh, positive bus bar is underneath of there, underneath of that uh, silicon right there. If I was to scrape that off, could put the leads right there, but yeah, that's it. All right, so that was just a quick, fast uh, way to show you guys how to do a bypass on one of these potted EBMX batteries, whether it has a blown BMS or you're just going to bypass it. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to speak on something else. As you guys know, I haven't made any videos. And uh, I was making batteries. Uh, I've been kind of sick lately. Ain't no kind of sick. I've been very sick lately. I really don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Uh... To be honest, I've gone and got checked out one time and uh, my iron levels were low and possibly my vitamin D. So I started taking uh, iron pills. I felt better for a little bit and then I went right back. So, you know, I feel good for a couple days and then I go back. Honestly, I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, guys. Uh, you know, I just been lazy as fuck with no energy no motivation at all um i did make a uh, a big pack that i told you i had to make one originally and uh that was supposed to be for uh it was a special build and uh man I, i'm really kind of hurting myself right now by being sick because that particular build would propel me, you know, it would really put me out there. It's for very reputable uh, e-biking, e-motorcycle company right now that has uh, e-motorcycle on the market. And they wanted me to build a high power pack for them, which I was doing. And I did, like I said, the first one I made, bit by bam, quick, fast, in a hurry. And uh, at the same time, somebody had came through right as I was finishing at that pack up and made me an offer I couldn't refuse on that particular pack. So uh, I sold that pack. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, the amount of money they offered me for that pack, I couldn't refuse it. So I was like, all right, go ahead and take it. I'll just make another one. In the process of making another one is when I got sick and man I just I try to work here and there and you know like I say then I start feeling bad and honestly I don't really want to work on a pack that's that important when I'm not feeling 100% because I won't do my best work so you know the wife has talked me into going to the doctor to see what the hell is wrong. Uh, I now know, like, why your grandparents, you know, if your grandparents were like mine, they didn't like going to doctors because they didn't want to hear any bad news. Uh, I ain't going to lie. I'm a little chicken about that. I don't want to hear no bad news, so I really didn't want to go to the doctor. But uh, now that I haven't been able to shake whatever the hell this is I'm dealing with, uh, I got to go. But in the meantime, that's what the holdup has been, uh, you know. So I had to make 
that original pack all over again. I started on it and, uh, you know, I do a little here, do a little there, and then start feeling like shit and stop. So, that's where we at now. Uh, something like this, somebody sent me. I can do this easy peasy. Uh, it doesn't take much to do that. So, you know, little small jobs I can do. Knock them out, but... Yeah, I've been feeling pretty pretty crappy lately. So, uh, other than that, everything is all good. I haven't been out here in, uh, in the lab too much because it's been hot as fuck. You know, too damn hot to work out here. As you can see, the Beast and the RZ still out here. So, I mean, ain't, you know, people start talking like shit or something wrong other than, you know, you where's your bikes at and all that. It's none of that. It's me. It's me feeling like crap. So, you know, I really never wanted to admit that, that I feel bad, but, you know, after, after this point, you know, I was like, man, I just gotta come clean. I don't feel good, man. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, we still got the, uh, Cyber X out here, man. Somebody was supposed to come get that bike. They didn't end up coming to get it. I am getting rid of that one. The Cyber X. But I'm selling it as is. As is meaning it doesn't have a controller or battery. Now I can make a battery and put a controller in it. It's just a roller for right now. If you're willing to pay that, then I'll do that. But, you know, pretty much was as is. But anyway, fellas. Uh, I got an appointment to see the doctor on Thursday. Hopefully he can get me back to feeling like myself so I can get back in the game you know and uh, in the meantime it is what it is you know a lot of people don't realize my ass is 52 although I look young I think I look young and I mean I normally feel good I you know I never felt 52 but whatever's wrong with me now man got me feeling like an old fucking man I ain't gonna bullshit you. So, hopefully we can get this straightened out. And I can get back in action. Alright, y'all. Take it easy. Take care. Just a quick video on uh, how to deal with those EBMX uh, packs. Peace.